Let's take a look at how easy it is to create your own sounds and kits within Groove Agent 4 using the Beat Agent. There's a unique integration with Cubase for a lot of drag and drop capability. If I have a number of different snare drums recorded at different velocity levels, such as these, I can select these eight different snare drum recordings directly from my Cubase project window or media bay and just drag and drop and have these appear directly on a pad. Now you may notice that there's different icons. There's one square, two square, and three square. If I do one square, it would automatically just place all eight samples directly onto a single pad. If there's an existing set of samples on the pad or audio files, we can now just come here and that would, with the two squares, would replace the existing samples. Or if I have multiple samples, I see the three squares, it's automatically gonna map each of the samples across multiple pads. Let's undo that and we'll drag, and I want these all to go onto one particular pad. So we'll just drop these onto a fresh pad. And my eight velocity layers have automatically been activated and split evenly across here. So if I click lower on a pad, and as I move up, we trigger higher velocity values. So it'll evenly divide it, but if you wanted to tweak it, you could just change and adjust the velocity level at where the pad will go to the next sample. So very, very fast and easy to do that. But you may not always want it to be based on velocity. If you wanted the samples to alternate, you may want to do what's called a round robin. So this could actually cycle through every time you hit the snare, it'll just cycle through the different velocity values decreasing. Or if you wanted it to be completely random, you can select random so you don't get those machine gun like snare rolls. Or if you want random exclusive, which means there won't be any repetitions, which could happen in random. So very, very easy to drag and drop your samples. Now let's say if you have a multi-track recording, like I have a multi-track drum recording here, where we're gonna have like three different kick drum microphones to make up the sound. So if we want a solo, we have kind of a close mic kick, a sub kick, a Yamaha sub kick, and a room mic. So these three kick drum sounds make up our what we want our, our kick drum to sound like. So we could zoom in here, and what I wanna do is just to select my range tool, we could go right before the kicks here. If you wanna just kinda of trim this just a little bit, and drag all three files directly onto a pad. Now. I may not want these to necessarily respond to different velocity levels. So I may not want, but what I want to do is to have these layered together. So I select layer and now we could have all three of those kick drums layered just that easily. Many people work with drum loops day in and day out, and they're great for being able to actually come up with an initial idea. But the problem is many people have found the same drum loops and kind of used the same drum loops over and over again. So if I wanted to actually find a particular drum loop here, let's say we have kind of a generic uh, sounding drum loop. But we want this song, we want to be able to make this drum loop our own, to customize it and make it fit within our song. So if I take that drum loop, I could just drag that loop directly onto a pad. And now I could just trigger that drum loop and it'll play back at the same time of the drum loop, which is great until you need to change the tempo. So if I change my tempo of my project to 144. Now when I play trigger the drum loop, it's not going to play back at the proper tempo. It's playing back at the same tempo. 
So what I could do is I'm going to select the sample under edit, go to sample, and we could put this into audio warp mode for music. And then we'll base it on tempo. So now when I click on it, it's going to play back perfectly in sync. So very easy to kind of work with your drum loop. Another method of working with drum loops is when you actually come here, dealing with slices for drum loops. So if I go to my slice tab, we can now click on create slices. And what that's going to do is kind of break apart each of the rhythmically significant elements. So like my kick, hi-hat, snare, and put them onto their own individual pads. And also, if I go to my pattern layer, it's created a pattern for us. Let's say if I was forgetting what sounds were which, we could click on the classify button and Groove Agent will automatically figure out what are the kicks, what are the hi-hats, and what are the snares and place them all on the same color. We get this little MIDI indication here. So if I drag and drop this file, I can now play back this loop. So let's listen to the original drum loop. And what this is doing is it's gonna take the original drum loop here and break it down into individual slices. What I can do now is duplicate that loop and I can just double click, go into my editor, just randomly change some of the notes around. using my arrow keys. I could have a variation of that loop. Using the same sounds, the same rhythm. Now something else, let's say if I wanted to take this particular pattern, my variation pattern, I could just drag and drop and have that directly on its own pattern pad. But once I come here, I can go to my pattern editor, and if I see, let's say I wanted to replace the snare drums, I could select the snare drum here on D1, right click, and say set notes of same class to D1. It's gonna take all the snares and use just that one D1 sample. So if you have like one snare that's a little better, maybe the drummer hit it just right, you can now just use that in the pattern. So when I trigger the pattern, all the other snares are just playing that particular snare. But if I wanted to actually replace that snare, let's say with, I go to a different kit here, a different agent, this hand clap, I can now copy that pad go to my beat agent pad and paste. So now when I trigger that pattern, it's just gonna play the hand clap instead of the snare. So you could take out different components, different sounds and replace sounds very, very easily using the new Groove Agent 4. But we're not limited to just using kind of just percussion sounds. So if I wanted to, Let's say if I have a bass note that's recorded here. I could just click here. I could go to my instrument layer and let's say that sounds like an E note. I'm just gonna drag this bass note. Directly here onto this pad. So now I could play that note. But if I go to my pitch, we could set a key range. So I could say I want to do E0 through E2. 
So we'll have two octaves. And I'll select this voice right here, go to our main. I'm just gonna set the polyphony to one. I can just play, play this from any MIDI source. One of the things is when you do this, if I select the very top octave here, you may notice that that doesn't last as long as the original one. So just kind of like the drum loop when we change that. So I'm going to select the sound, go to sample, enable audio warp, we'll choose solo, and then base it on tempo. So now all my notes will be the same length. So if I go to the top note here, it is automatically stretched. Go ahead and mute some of the art parts. I could have this bass part here. And now that could just play back any MIDI and you could play it from a MIDI keyboard in real time. You can play vocals, horn licks, any audio file, you could just drag and drop and make your own sounds. So as you can see, the unique integration with Cubase allows Groove Agent 4 to have great drag and drop capabilities so you can make your own kits, your own sounds, and make your own voice.